has come to our family. I'm Reginald Gickington, and you can call me Reggie, and today we'll be continuing our painting journey through the miniatures of the Darkest Dungeon board game by Mythic Games. In today's video, we're going to be clearing out three similar but distinct enemies, the Slithering Creatures, the Pliskin, the Rattler, and the Adder. These enemies were added in the Shieldbreaker DLC, but in the board game can appear as generic enemies. Being snakes, and thus long tubes, they're harder to place those iconic shadows and highlights on but I still think they should be fun to match the painterly art style of the game with. So let's get started. Starting with the Pliskin, I've primed in black, like always. But just in case, we're going to start with a coat of Doom Death black all over the body, and then camouflage green on the head and the top side of the hood. Fun fact of the day, Cobra hoods actually have ribs inside them, and are expanded by filling them with air rather than muscle contraction. Don't forget the green bands around the body, of which there are five. Next up, we're going to do some face details. Rackarth flesh on the teeth, and Bugman's glow on the skin between its jaws. Once we've done that, we're going to use Corvus Black to trace a fat line along the highlight over the black parts. Use the original game art as to reference where that reflective highlight should go, but it's generally going to be a broad stroke along the most outward-facing part of the body. Then, we're using black wash all over the head and hood. Don't bother on the body since it's already black. The next step is going to be dark green, which we're going to do the eyes with, and then somber gray applied right over the Corvus black parts, but in an even finer line. It's okay to have visible brush strokes here, as a slightly shakier and less smooth line will give both the impression of a scaly texture and also a more accurate reflection of the original art. Now we're going to highlight the head and hood using camouflage green once more. Also hit the underside of the hood doing a single line along each ridge. We're going to wrap up the Pliskin with a standard base and shadows like we always do. And that's the Pliskin, it was pretty easy all things considered. I think personally they're probably my favorite looking snake, though in the process of painting them all, the other two did grow on me quite a bit. Speaking of which, the next one is going to be the Rattler, for which we're going to start by using earth all over the entire body and head. Then we're going to use somber grey on the rattle itself, and we're going to wet blend the two together around the end of the tail portion. To wet blend, all you need to do is apply your second color over top your first still wet color so that the two merge together and form a smoother transition. Thank you. 
Like the Pliskin, the next step is Rakarth Flesh and Bugman's Glow applied to the teeth and cheeks in the same manner. We're then going to use an all-over coat of blackwash. Try to go heavy here, since these snakes are pretty smooth and slightly featureless, which makes the washes tend to leave visible brush strokes unless you ply a lot. On the flip side, though, using too much will leave some pretty ugly coffee stains, so try not to just dunk your minis in the pot of blackwash. We're touching up the body by doing a very heavy dry brush of Steel Legion Drab all over the top half of the snake now, until the body no longer has any visible strokes or stains from the wash. You should also at this time give some freckles of Rakarth flesh around the wrinkled areas on the neck and underneath the head, though I do forget to do that until after the next step. Next up is going to be a very, very light dry brush of Cadian flesh tone on any areas where the body takes a sharp turn, like the neck, the arch behind the neck, and the kinks in the tail before the rattle. We're also using Thunderhawk Blue for its eyes. For the rattle, we're going to highlight each bulb with somber gray, then afterwards go back and highlight the top edge with a one-to-one -one mix of somber gray and ghost gray for an even lighter color. And like the Pliskin, we're finishing up with the shadows and the base in the same manner that we always do. With the Rattler done, we can move on to the last of the snakes, the Adder. This big mean boss monster is certainly the most intimidating, and one of the largest minis in the game, but he's not too hard to paint. Step 1 is going to be Rakarth Flesh applied all over the belly of the snake, and then Green Grey applied all over the rest of the mini, barring the inside of the mouth, which is going to remain black. We're now going to differentiate the two heads. We're going to do a heavy dry brush of camouflage green on the head with no shedding skin, and a normal dry brush of sick green on the shedding head. The camouflage green dry brush is then going to continue all the way down the body and along the tail. You can lighten up the intensity of the dry brush the further down the body it gets, but we want the head to be almost completely coated in camouflage green. We're now going to use Contrast Warp Lightning all over the shedding head, and once that's dried, we're going to go back and blackwash the entire mini. Be sure the contrast paint is completely dry before you do this step, 
or else it's going to mix together and look absolutely awful. For the eyes, we're using Stegadon Scale Green on the light green head and Electric Blue on the dark green head. We're going to highlight now using Sick Green on the dark green head, following the lips and the horns, and Camouflage Green applied to the highlight of the scales on the light green. Bugman's Glow and Rackarth Flesh comes next, used in a manner you can probably guess by now. But aside from the cheeks and teeth, we're also going to use Bugman's Glow on the scars visible along the light green head and neck. And we're going to dry brush Rackarth Flesh around the shedding skin, going heavier towards the ends of the skin. To finish the adder, we're going to do the standard Black Shadows and Basing scheme, but also don't forget to use the black wash on the cheeks and teeth and to do a slit on each eye with some Doom Death Black for the pupils. And now we have some, in the words of a certain Belgian adventure serial, Great Snakes. They're not my favorite enemies in the game, personally, compared to the skeletons, cultists, and brigands, but I do think these guys turned out exceptionally nice, and moreover, exceptionally accurate. For how few paints and how little effort each snake required, it was a pleasant surprise seeing them transform into something nearly identical to their in-game appearance. In any case, have fun painting your Darkest Dungeon miniatures, and feel free to tag me on Instagram, at ReggieGick, to show me how yours turned out. Links to my affiliated socials can be found in the description. Feel free to subscribe or like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with another painting tutorial.